Well, hello. Yes, I know. I know. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm late. <gasps> terrible, terrible. I always finish my podcast by saying, see you tomorrow, same time, same place. But I'm late today, aren't I? Oh, my goodness. Almost by an hour as well. I do apologise. That's what happens when you go house hunting. You get held up and then the weather's nice. I moan about the weather all the time, but not today. It's glorious sunshine. And when the weather's nice, of course, you have to sit in a beer garden and have a drink. It's kind of almost compulsory. It's almost a kind of like a law or something. <laughs> Certainly one of my laws. So I apologise for being late. So the, any of you that were uh, wondering where I was tonight, that's what I was doing. I was house hunting and also in the pub. Ooh, drink sensibly though, responsibly. That's the word, responsibly, not sensibly. We have comedy tonight, of course, with Steptoe and Son. Yes, I do like these two. They do make me chuckle somewhat. This one is called The Economist. And it was first broadcast on the 31st of July, 1966. We now present another episode in a radio series based on the world-famous BBC comedy success, Steptoe and Son. <laughs> With Wilfred Bramble as Albert. Look at him, sitting there. Calls himself a rag and bow man, and all he does is read George Bernard Shaw. Who does he think he is, Lloyd George? We'd be all right if he filled the cart up with as much junk as he put in his head. And Harry H. Corbett as Harold. Oh, God. I wish he'd stop muttering to himself when he's sorting out them legs. It cuts right across my study, and it does. Oh, sure. Oh, George Bernard. How can an animal like him fit him with a picture of the man in your Nietzsche? And here they are in The Economist. Be divine and makes all the difference. Nice jacket this was. Bit roomy. The pockets won't seem to, but still very nice. Harold! What is in now? I wish you'd stop reading when I'm talking to you. Hi. Eh? Not bad, is it? This jacket? Yeah, do me a nice turn, this will. Where'd you get it? I don't know. Down the road somewhere. Nice bit of material. Ah, what do you think? Not a bad fit, eh? Oh, very nice. Hello, what's this? Fair old pullover. Lovely. You got hold of some good stuff today. <laughs> Look better with an, an iron run over it. Are you keeping all that? Yeah, there's some good stuff here. I sorted it all out. This ain't rags. There's some good items, these are. There's years of life left in these. You're going to iron all that sack full, are you? Yeah. What for? To wear, of course. They're all creased. You can't expect me to walk up and down looking like a scruff bag. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, I, I couldn't expect you to do that. Oh, no, no. Have you washed them? No. No. Well, let me tell you, it is far more important to wash them than to iron them. You don't know where they've been, do you? How can you put on dirty, filthy things like that next to your skin? Anyhow, you're not putting them in my half of the wardrobe. Ah. Oh. I'll find somewhere. And you're not hanging them on the picture rail, neither. Picture rails is to hang pictures on, not clothes. Honestly, you'd have this place looking like a pigsty, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? I'm the only one here who cares. I'm fighting a losing battle here with you. You don't care what the place looks like, do you? You're dirty. That's what you are. You're dirty. I ain't dirty. You are dirty. When did you last go down to the slipper bath? I don't like slipper baths. Of course you don't. They got hot water down there, hot water and soap in there. It's not that. It's just oh, I don't like slipper baths. 
They're common, for one thing. Well, I'd rather be common and clean and stuck up and dirty. <laughs> I'm telling you, Dad, if you don't change your ways, I'm going to fumigate this house. I'm going to get the sulfur candles going and seal the filter rooms. And if you don't get down to the slipper baths, I'll lock you in there with them. Oh, we're not having them candles in here again. They stink the place out. And people like you is a menace to decent society. Don't you realise that dirt harbours diseases? If we was to kill off all the dirty old blokes like you, we wouldn't have diseases anymore. <laughs> I mean, it was people like you what caused the plague of London. <laughs> they used to throw all their old rubbish out onto the streets. You're worse than them. You bring it all in here. Oh, well, that's our business, isn't it? Yes, but we don't have to keep it in the house. We've got a yard out there. Uh, oh, uh, where am I going to hang this jumper? Oh, chuck it away. <laughs> Other people's left oh, over. I ain't chucking good clothes away. I need some new trouble for the summer. The shirts and pullovers in here, a pair of trousers, underclothes. Oh, I've got a complete change of wardrobe here. Chuck it away. Ah, look at these riding breeches. Look at them. <laughs> you missed them, didn't you? Don't tell me to chuck these away. I'll, I'll look marvellous in these. I'll bet you will. They're women's. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Oh, uh, yeah, well, never mind. Uh, put a row of buttons down the front, they'll be all right. <laughs> anyway, they can do with ironing. You see, son, when you've lived as long as I have, you'll realise that what's rubbish to some people is dead handy for others. Yeah, well, there's no need in this day and age for you to hang on to other people's rags. I mean, there's people that need it more than you. I mean, people who really need it. Send it to the Oxford Famine Relief. Oxford? There are no famines up there. I've been through there. They look all right to me. <laughs> no, it's the war on want mob. They send it out to Africa, places like that. They don't wear riding breeches out there. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen a blackie wearing riding breeches. It'd make their legs sweat. <laughs> oh, I wish I was a blackie sometimes. All that sun... Bananas hanging on the trees, coconuts, marvellous life. I don't know what they want to come over here for, a rotten place like this. I wish I lived out there. I wouldn't have to worry where my next suit comes from. <laughs> I wouldn't have a dirty old devil like you out there. Huh? They are clean, they are. They always wash in running water. They don't sit in baths like we do with, with the plug-in, washing in their own dirt. You, you don't even do that. You walk around in it. I'd be better off there than I am here. I wouldn't have to be doing this. You don't have to do it. Now, I've told you before, you'd have enough money to buy new clothes if you'd let me run this business properly. Now, don't start that again. Well, it's true. I mean, give me a free hand for a month. One month. That's all I asked. Let me run the business as I want to. And you soon see the difference. I mean, look at you. Pottering around, scratching a living, ironing a load of old rags, mending bits of old boots, living like a pauper. It's degrading. Just let me have a go. Go on, you couldn't do any worse. Yes, we could. We could be in debt, and we're not in debt. Look at it all. At least in, everything we have here is, is our own. Yeah, and a bigger collection of old rubbish I've never seen in my life. Rubbish? You don't know what you're talking about. There's some valuable stuff here, mate. There's antique dealers who give a fortune for some of this in here. <laughs> well, then for God's sake, let's get rid of it. Let's get out of here. Uh, no, no it's, it's not the right time. You see, all this stuff is appreciating. Oh, yes. yeah, antiques go up and then price every year. All my wealth is tied up in here. You, you've got to wait till the time is right. Oh, God. <laughs> he lives in a world of his own. Oh, Dad, there ain't nothing in here. No antiques, nothing. Look, if I was a junk man calling here, I wouldn't give you 20 quid for the lot. And that includes the Olsen cart. Yeah, what do you know about it? You wouldn't know an antique if it was put under your nose. Those Regency sofa tables over there are fetching 500 nicker a piece up in the West End. Regency what? Sofa tables. Regency? Them? You're joking. It's got it on them, in one of the drawers. Regency. That's where it come from. The Regency furniture arcade, Peckham. <laughs> Well, 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 what about this writing bureau thing? It's as nice a piece of 15th century Spanish as ever I've seen. There you are. Look what it says there. Seville. Yeah, it's probably got oranges written on the other drawer. <laughs> yeah, 
Yes, no more 15th century than I am. Look, do you know what they do in Spain, down on the Costa Brava? There's some peasant bloke making all this 15th century stuff. They put it in a sea for a week, then when it's warped, they fish it out, fire a shotgun at it for the woodworm holes and flog it to the British tourists. <laughs> woodworm? There ain't no woodworm homes in this. Well, he'd probably run out of ammunition then. <laughs> You laugh the other side of your face when I take these up to Christie's and have them put under the hammer. <laughs> it's the best thing that could happen to them. <laughs> Bang them up! Now, come on, let's do it now. Let's have a burn up. Come on, you ain't sure, ain't you? Oh, what shall we start on? Here you are, here you are. Let's start on this Louis XXIX farm chair. Oh, 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 put that match down. You'll have us all up in flames. You're insured. All these valuable antiques. What's it insured for? 20,000, 30,000, 40,000. Let's have a burn up and retire in luxury. Stop it. Stop it. Don't get striking those matches. They won't take long. Five minutes, it'll all be gone. We'll be rich. We'll be rich. We'll be rich. No, 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 no. You mustn't. You mustn't. You're insured. Insured, aren't you? Yeah, I'm insured. Put that match out. How much will we get? How much will we get if our home is destroyed? Our magnificent home, full up with priceless antiques sought after by connoisseurs the world over. It all comes up in a cloud of smoke. How much? Come on, before I set light to it, I'll see how much I'm doing it for. 200 quid. <laughs> 200 quid. That's what we're worth, is it? What about the house? Oh, that includes the house. <laughs> house and contents, 200 quid. 200 quid! A right little Wallace collection, ain't it? <laughs> After 64 years of flogging your guts out, and that's it. 200 knicker! Well, there's stuff out in the yard we haven't sorted out yet. And when I get me certificates for me antiques... 200 well... quid! Well, now we know where we are. That settles it. There's going to be a big shake-up round here. 200 knicker! Well, what are you going to do? Change our methods. Look, do you see this book? That's what I'm going to do. This is how we should run the business. What's that, then? Economic planning in a capitalist society. It is all in here. We've been going about it all wrong. It's opened my eyes, this book has. Look at this. Chapter 3. Bulk buying. The more you buy, the cheaper you get it. That's what we should have been doing. Buy when it's cheap, flog it when it's dear. Buy what? That don't matter, so long as there's a lot of it. <laughs> That's the secret. It's all in here. That's the way the government does it. Planning, mate. But supposing what you buy don't get dearer. Then you create a demand for it. Then it must go up. I mean, it stands to reason. You are the only source of it. They've got to come to you. Charge your own prices. Charge your own prices? Oh, it's the only way, Dad. Quantity. We're wasting our time totting about the streets on the off chance, picking up a bit of this, a bit of that. You've got to go out for it. Buy big. I'm telling you, I ain't got to spend the rest of my time buying up a sack of rags here and a broken lawnmower there. I ain't interested in that. Not anymore. I've got ideas, Dad. You read too many books, you do. If you spent more time working and less time reading books, we'd have more than 200 quid. It's not only you, it's everybody. All they do is read books, filling their heads with ideas, making them discontented with what they've got. Are you happy? No, I'm not happy. Well, I am. And that's because I don't read books. I've never read a book in my life. Well, not the whole way through. If I had me way, I'd close down all the libraries, burn all the books, and leave book reading to them as understands it. How do you know if you're going to understand them unless you read them? Down on your back. I'm your dad. What's that got to do with it? I, I, I've got medals in that drawer. Oh, no, you haven't. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> have a bit of respect. Oh, I'll give up. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I do. I've seen enough of it. Book reading leads to communism. <laughs> And how do you work that out? I've seen it. Ignorant people, they pick up a book, read it, and in five minutes, they're running out of church singing the red flag. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> really? Look, this book here has got nothing to do with a communism. It is about how to make your fortune by using your loaf. You could hardly describe that as communism. And that's what I'm going to do. Make some loot. You won't turn your nose up at that, will you? You won't care where I got the idea from, will you? Yeah, you won't make any money. As from tomorrow morning, I'm changing my methods of trading. Bulk buying only. If I ain't got a cartload, I don't want it. Well, I've got some studying to do. 
And talking of cops, you'd better make arrangements to have that horse belted down. Why? He just don't fit in with my plans. I mean, he can't carry enough. I'm going to need at least a ten-ton lorry. I mean, a horse is just a relic of our inefficient past. Melt down Hercules. You, you can't do that. We've had Hercules for over 20 years. I'm sorry, Dad. It is all very sad. But that's the way it is. Oh, it's evolution. Adapt or die. That's what Bergson said. And if he can't adapt, he's got to go. How can he adapt himself into a ten-ton lorry, a great pudding? <laughs> no, I mean, he is doomed. There's no place for a cart horse in modern industry. And anyway, I need a few quid we'll get for him for capital. You ain't touching that horse. If changing our methods means melting down the horse, I don't want any part of it. We'll see. A few pound notes in my hand with your name on, and you carry him down of a knacker's yard yourself. <laughs> Good night. I bet that horse has him first. He's only waiting his chance. One of these days, he's going to get a hoof right in his cake hole. Serve him right, too. How many you got then? Three or four thousand. Oh, how much? Fifty quid the lot. Thirty-five. Forty-five. Thirty-seven pounds ten. Forty quid. It's a deal. Come on and get them then. Just a minute, I'll need a shuffle. I'm heading for the lost around us. Not you, won't beg me. What's under that tower falling? Well, you'd like to know, wouldn't you? <laughs> what you buy? What would you get? Dad, we're on our way. Forty quid that lot under there. Nearly four thousand of them. Four thousand? Really? Let's have a look. Voila. What's this then? What do they look like? Their teeth. <laughs> Four thousand sets of false choppers there. <laughs> All shapes and sizes. What? Forty nick of the lot. That is the way to do business. What good's four thousand sets of false teeth? What's good, are they? Well, that depends on whether you ain't got any choppers or not, don't it? <laughs> I mean, if you ain't got none and you want some, they're useful, ain't they? Leave them alone. What's the matter with you? Ain't you ever seen false teeth before? Yeah, in a glass of water, I have. <laughs> not a cart full of them. How many have you got there? I told you, about 4,000. What? Ups and downs? I don't know. Well, you don't go into that sort of thing when you are bulk buying. Well, come on, help me unload them and sort them out into sizes. Really? Where'd you get them from? A dental laboratory. They're all teeth that have been made over all the years and the people haven't come to collect them. I mean, they've either died or went abroad or, or they didn't fit properly. There's a few dozen export rejects too. So they decided to have a clear out. Here, hold the sack open and give me that shovel. You're not having them in the house, are you? In the house? Well, of course I am. What is the matter with you? I mean, you've got to get them under cover. It might rain. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't bringing them in my house. I ain't sleeping in the house with 4,000 sets of false Amsteads lying about. <laughs> It's grisly. They're not going to hurt you. I mean, they can't bite. Not natural. I know they're not natural. They're false ones. <laughs> That's what I bought them for. Oh, that sack I I ain't touching them. It's horrible. It's like Birkin Air. It ain't like Birkin Air. These is teeth. False choppers. Unused. Never seen the inside of a mouth. These, my old son, are the gateway to our fortune. What are you going to do with them? Sell them. Who to? Who do you think? People who ain't got no choppers of their own, of course. Yeah, people ain't gonna buy them. What about the National Health Service? They can go to a dentist and get a pair made to measure. They aren't going to buy choppers made for other people. Look, it costs a nicker on the National Health. We can do a brand new set, suit every mouth, for five bob a time. That is a thousand nicker on a forty nicker layout. That is the way to make money. Oh, look at them. Oh, there is some marvellous choppers amongst them. I mean, some people would give a lot to have a mouthful of them. Oh, they're all good teeth, you know. I mean, there's no rubbish. It's all quality stuff. Look at the workmanship. Bought through anything they would. Now, they cost pounds to make. Ministry of Health specifications, you know. 
I mean, this must be the biggest bargain of the year. What about you? Is your old pair? Oh, I ain't wearing other people's teeth. I keep telling you, they ain't other people's. They ain't never been used. Here you are. Now, here's a nice pair. Suit you lovely, those would. Don't you come near me. Very distinguished, handsome set of choppers they are. It's about time you had some decent ones. Take them away. Oh, I ain't putting other people's teeth in my mouth. Oh, Bob, that's all it'll cost you. I'll give you three and six on your old ones. There you are. I can't be fairer than that, can I? Clear off. Get him out of here bringing home things like that. It's disgusting. I can't understand you. You wear old rags that have been worn by other people, but a set of choppers that ain't been worn by anybody, you turn your nose oh, up. We there. all got our principles. Handsome they are. Oh, they could have been made for a film star, these. Perhaps Bert Lancaster. No, oh, I don't care who they was made for. I ain't wearing them. Please yourself. Other people will. Ah, oh, you wait till the word gets around. There'll be a queue of gums outside here a mile long. <laughs> Come on. You ain't keeping them in my house. Oh, just clear the table. Hey, hey, mind the loaf. Hey, hey, look out. There's sardines left in that tin. Now, let's get them sorted out. Uppers. Downers. Full plates. Half plates and singles. You've wasted your money. You'll never get rid of them. You've got no imagination, have you? I mean, you've never been a man of vision, have you? So they don't sell well over here. There's a whole world to choose from. Do you realise that two-thirds of the population of the world ain't got two acres to rub together? They're starving. Well, if they're starving, what do they want choppers for, then? <laughs> That's is a very callous remark to make. They are as entitled to have choppers as much as you are. Anyway, they might be cannibals. Eat each other. And I wouldn't fancy a cannibal's chances without any teeth. Well, it's a big disgrace, that is. And we'll be helping Britain export or die, sell abroad. How would you like to be in charge of the export department? No, no I don't like it. There's some things I just can't deal in, and teeth is one of them. Well, suit yourself. I'll keep all the profits myself. No, you got them. How are you going to get rid of them? Advertising. What? On telly? A thousand quid a minute, that's right. That's all my profit gone for us, dark. Now, I think I'll put some small ads in the papers. For Times. Oh, that's a good one. I should think that's read by more hard-up people than any other. <laughs> yes, The Times. For sale. 4,000 sets of unused choppers. Apply at Stepto and Son don't sound right somehow. Not for the times. No? Well, perhaps you're right. I'll have to sit down and work something out. Now, let's have a real thing now. Yes, yes, I've got it. I've got it. Old established firms have quantity of first-class quality false teeth for disposal. Highly recommended for distressed gentlefolk. Discreet fittings arranged. Apply box 415. What are you doing in the yard all dressed up like that? This is my golfing gear. What are you up to then? I'm practicing my putting, father. It's very important. As Arnold Palmer says, games is won or lost on the putting green. Yeah, it's daft. You don't have to get in a jam jar on a putting green. <laughs> that is merely to assimilate the hole. Now, would you mind shutting yours? <laughs> <laughs> Missed. Well, he would have gone in if it wasn't for you yakety yak putting me off. Is that all you've got to do? Very surely, mate. This is all we'll be doing all day. Pass me the number three iron, would you? Have you got any answers to your advert yet? No, not yet. Hey, you've got to give it time. How much time do you want? You put it in a week ago. Five days. Well, five days then. We haven't earned a penny since you brought them teeth home. We can't live on fresh air, you know. Go out on the cart while you're waiting and earn some money and don't laze about in here all day, banging balls about the yard. I've told you I cannot go out on the cart. I mean, I can't leave the yard. Where's some customers turn up? I've got to be ready for you. You ain't going to get any customers. You bought a pup, I told you that. You threw 40 nicker down the drain. People aren't going to buy second-hand teeth. Don't keep calling them second-hand teeth. Well, that's what they are. 
I think I'll try some putting shots from over there. Yeah, and what about the horse? He ain't had no exercise. He ain't been out of the shed for a week. Do him good. Put some meat on him. Go on, get back in the house. Get some dinner going. Oh, yeah, you want your grub. You're not bringing anything in, but you want your grub. Where am I supposed to get money for food, eh? You got plenty of money. I have not. I haven't got any money. I'm broke. What's in that box under the floorboards, then? What? That's it. Go on, I did so well, though. <laughs> If any of them's missing, I'll have the police on you. Don't worry, I'm not after your rotten money. If you're not after it, how do you know what I always keep it in? I don't want it, mate. I've got plenty of my own coming soon. I'll have more than that tatty bundle of five as you got up there. Not from those teeth, you won't. Forty quid down the drain, that is. They saw you come in, mate. You won't make any money. You ain't got any brains. A rotten rag and bone man you've been all your life, and a rotten rag and bone man you'll always be. Throw things at me! Ah, oh, you silly old switch. <laughs> of course, I shall sell them. I shall make a bomb myself. Like it says in the book, bulk buying it is the only way. I'll make a bomb. I mean, there's more than one paper to advertise in. I'll just try a different one, that is all. Sacrifice. Forty pounds or near offer. Four thousand sets of false teeth. <laughs> Chance for someone. Genuine bargain. Ten pound. Or near offer. Four thousand sets of false teeth. <laughs> You're soaking wet, son. So would you be wet if you'd been sitting up there behind that steaming great backside all day? Ooh. There you Ooh. are. You can do it if you try. Nice cartload. Much better than all that butt buying idea. Uh, I'm glad you had the sense to come back to what you know. Rags and bones. That's our game. Stick to that and we can't go wrong. Yeah. It's knowing when to stop and that's what you've done. Now then, take off that top hole and let's have a look uh, what you've got. Just, just, and then right, you can right. come inside of a nice pop yeah, cup yeah. of tea. Well, look, Dad, I want to have a word with you first. Uh, what? What's the matter? You haven't been buying me more, more teeth, have you? No, no, of course I have. Uh, what's the matter with you, then? <laughs> well, that ten pounds you gave me this morning, you know, to buy rags and stuff. Yeah? Well, I spent it all. Ah, that's all right, as long as it's worth it. Let's have a look. Take off that uh, tarpaulin, for heaven's sake. All right, Dad. <laughs> Of them. They're all like civil defense. They're, they're ten nickered a lot. You've got, you've got 400 gas masks. Now, look, before you go off the deep end, look, see, the rubber's not perished. I mean, they're in working order. I mean, there must be an army somewhere that needs them. You see, there's new armies starting up somewhere every day. The bloke I bought them from, he's been selling them for years. He's made a fortune. It's just that he's had to go abroad. So he let me have them cheap. He liked me, you see. He said I could get a five of each for them. <laughs> Oh, Dad, I mean, you can't hear me. Way. Look, there's no need to take this sort of attitude. we still got the teeth. Oh, no, we still got the teeth. But, look, we can make a special offer. A set of teeth with every gas mask. <laughs> now, Dad, don't be like that. Oh, look, listen, Dad, Dad, you can't go along with war weapons. I mean, you ever heard of an arms millionaire going broke? Have you? I mean, try and see it from my point of view. Oh, Dad, Dad. Don't be like that, oh Dad! Look, we could become another Otto Krupps! Please, Dad, we're gonna make a fortune! Dad! You've been listening to Wilfred Bramble and Harry H. Corbett as Steptoe and Son with Ian Burford. Written by Ray Galton and Alan Simpson, adapted for radio by Gail Pedrick, and produced by Bobby J.
Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the latest episode of Step to Insan. I apologise again for being late, but it's lovely weather today in the UK, isn't it? Well, where I am anyway, other parts of the UK might not be having such nice weather. I don't know. I've not really looked at the forecast, but can't complain today. It's been glorious. It's been warm. The dark clouds came over a moment ago and I didn't think, oh, well, here we go. We did have quite a thunderstorm the other night, but no, the clouds seem to have rolled on by. They are taking rain elsewhere, not over me. So I am happy. I will be back tomorrow night, same time, same place. I will endeavour not to be late. Uh, with some more great stories tomorrow night, of course, is Sherlock Holmes. Don't forget, you can also check out my podcast page at patreon.com forward slash foxygeekgirl. Can't wait to catch up with you all tomorrow night. In the meantime, stay safe. Always be kind. Love you all.